Hello and welcome. My name's Leanne. I live in Australia and this is my crafty cupboard. Hello everyone and welcome to my version of Roxy's Journal of Stitchery down the garden path and the prompt this time is a visitor. When I was thinking about this prompt there's lots of garden visitors that I have that I love. One of my favourites would have to be the rainbow lorikeet that comes to the Grevillea. So I've got a source photo here and what I'm thinking is in order to get the design on I'm going to need to draw this one out. So I was thinking of drawing on the thin muslin and putting the background this time behind. Grevillea leaves. I was thinking of using wool. So this one is 8413 and this one 8406. For the flowers parts of the grevillea, I was thinking of cutting to get the sort of peachy yellow tones of this silk ribbon to do the little sort of curly bits that are inside. I was thinking of just doing some ribbon stitch for that and then using perhaps this Auvergne to make the stamen bits that stick out and um, putting a gold bead on the end for the little bits on the end. And then for the lorikeet, I was actually gifted a bag of anchor cottons and they are the most beautiful bright colours. And so I have virtually every colour I think I might need. So for the head, you're going for these three blues. So we've got one, three, two, one, three, one, and one, three, oh. And then for the green down here, two, four, two, and two, five, five. And for his chest, gone very bright, um, triple three and 47, 313 and 303. I'm actually thinking those two together might make the beak quite well. And a very bright yellow for the yellow patches, which doesn't have a number on unfortunately it's lost its number and then for the eyes I've got 340 and black which is 0403 and I'll probably put in a little bit of black under here as well in the darker bits of the head and maybe down in the belly part just to darken that up so that's the plan let's see how we go My change of plans because of how fragile that old thread is I'm not separating it it's probably not meant to be separated anyway because it was very hard to separate does anyone know it's anchor number 18 so it's actually four ply when I separated it um, but as I mentioned I'd, I feel like it's not meant to be separated so the bird's going to be a lot thicker than I originally planned. So I'm just doing a stitch of black to get started. I can see there's a line that runs from the bird's top of the beak to the center, out to the center of the eye.
because I'm just looking at the source photo and working out where the darker shadows are. I'm trying to lay down the stitches now in the direction that the feathers are growing.
Um, because the thread's much thicker, I'm only going to do the lighter, lighter blue this one. I'm not going to do the three as I'd planned. Let's see how it looks. morning back to a video i've managed to film a little of the rainbow lorikeets in the grevillea this morning they were a little, a little elusive hiding in the bushes um, but hopefully i've captured enough for you to be able to see them So I'm just up to adding the gold part on the ends. I've got felt down on my work surface today because I'm working with beads. I find it helps a little with them. They don't roll so much. I'll keep eating these and I'll be back. Eating my breakfast as I go. This is Vegemite I find when I'm unwell. My body really craves Vegemite. How about you? It's your comfort food when you're not well. I wonder if it's like the B group vitamins that's in Vegemite that my body wants. So I'm drawing out just the non-metallic thread Add in some of the ones coming from the center. It's getting very difficult because of course you have to avoid the ribbon. If you come through the ribbon you'll get stuck or you'll risk pulling your ribbons. Now doing this I work with the thread and also a very fine couching thread to get it to make the shape because it can't curve on its own. See, it'll just be straight. And if I, the way to get a nice curve stitch would be to do something like stem stitch. That would be too thick for the effect that I want. So once I've put the thread through, I come through with a super fine thread and just take a little stitch where I want it to curve.
stitch. There. I have a tendency to try and work symmetrically all the time because nature doesn't work like that. how it's looking at the moment so you get the idea I'll, I'll come back
I learned to um, to up my hoop on the left hand side. I always used to put it at the top and get my threads caught in at every stitch. So I'm putting it in the left hand side and my hand holds the hoop. I don't do that anymore. So um, to make this one, what I did was use the variegated ribbon that I had and cut it so that I had see it's green, peach and yellow. So I cut it to have just the bits I wanted to use. I'm going to cut it off here. Tie a knot there. So imagine the center line up from the stem. Just start here. I did a ribbon stitch out to the side. And I did it. work the way up the stem doing that. It's actually easy now I've cut that back round I can see where to go to exactly. In the centre of the Grafilia it's got these sort of plump curled sections and that's what I'm trying to create with the ribbon. too tight so that they can stay sort of curled. I think in my first one I pulled a little too tightly. So leaving a bit more of a gap in the centre this time to make it easier to get the the stamens in, if that's what they are. I really should look up the anatomy of the pavilion. You see that one I put a bit tighter? This is not as curled as this one. I like the one that's a bit more curled. accidentally stitching to the 
steam in line at the moment, so it's a bit bigger than I intended. Oops, dropped. All right, there's no rescuing that, but what if I just do a loop, loop stitch over it? That's good. They fixed it. So this is just like I showed before that you come up thread and out where you want it to go. really nicely <laughs> that was a happy accident I like happy accidents it was just luck because of how the thread went it somewhat, it somewhat did it okay before I go any further I'm going to couch those down I found if you put the couching stitch right in the center where you hold the curve, you'll make a little V shape instead. I'll drop again on the beat. So it's better to um, couch. In other locations. It's going to be the side of the curve. Do pistol stitch to get that knot on the end for sure. It's just that um, metallic threads are a bit rough, don't play so nicely. I do quite like the golden glow that you get from the bead. This flower surely must be glittering like gold to the birds and bees that feed on them. So this I put from out here. I don't want it all coming from the center because then it'll start to look like a ladder. Get the idea so I'll be back when I've done it all. 
Okay, that's it for glittery threads. And so next I'm just going to off camera stitch just the red cotton. The same as I did over. Just to give the flower its more fuller appearance. Okay, so that's done. I like this one. I feel like I've got captured the curves of it more successfully than I did in that one. So note to self, maybe stitching through a fever is not the best idea. Wait until the fever subsides a little. Um, yeah, I like, I like this one. I also went and couched down a piece of yellow over. I wasn't happy with the look of the back stitch to get the curve of his beak. And so I've just couched down another thread over the top and yeah, I'm happy with that I feel it's a bit more successful I have to deal with I don't know what was going on when I cut that like that I only have this much left so I'm going to, have to be creative so I'm going to go off camera and um, cut that and slip that underneath the chul. This chul on top was just a stroke of genius. I did it because the edges of my fabric are so frayed, um, which normally doesn't matter because I'm putting the fabric over the top. But as we know on this piece, I went with the fabric under the muslin so I could um, draw the lorikeet on it. Oops, we're stuck. And you can basically see how frayed the edges are. Um, anyway, so I've learnt now that it's a really good technique. Like maybe in the future I could just lay down the backing in you know, solid pieces and maybe drawing on the mesh works well enough. So I've just put a few tacking stitches here and there to hold. I've tucked the excess behind. So we have a neater edge along the bottom. Um, and the leaves, I'm going to try. They're sort of quite thin and sharp. I'm going to try doing like a feather stitch and see how that looks. I'm out of the hoop now because the area I'm working is too big. I probably need to come back and do the same thing with another piece. leaves are really quite um, a deterrent on this plant and um, it is the flowers that pop and look lovely just moved into a bit of straight stitching as I walked around, around the corner. Look, make this next um, one this way.
I think lots of those will do the job. So I'm going to do some more of these and then I'll be back. Okay, so that's so I stitched down. I think that might be enough to give the effect. I am going to come back and thicken them up with a slightly lighter thread. But before I do, this is sort of annoying being all loose and flopping around everywhere. And so I'm going to stitch this section by stem stitching. The stems that you can see there. What on earth are you doing? <laughs> I think I think he wants some attention. He's just been very naughty and clawed his way up a chair. I'm just going to stop and see what the cat wants. He wanted cuddles. Okay, I'm just going to tack down the edge first. Just using the same green I used on the lorikeet. Because it's here in my workbox. It's a good reason for an artistic choice, isn't it? It's as good a reason as any. down to this section now where there's a raw ridge so it's not going to make any sense but I'm just going to blanket stitch it so it's not a raw ridge There's only one slight problem for me with cheeky cuddles. I adore them. He's a very cuddly boy. I'm slightly allergic. <laughs> and so my nose and the skin on my throat itch severely for a little while afterwards. going to carry on with the blanket stitch if I can or oh, might be too tricky under here all right so I go down there just do some cheeky stitching underneath do some running stitch with some blanket stitch here try and get down both raw ridges if I can this one started to fray already but Let's see what we can do I'm gonna start here with the stem stitch just to get the corner down and I'm actually back stitching not stem stitching <laughs> This one next.
for these branches, I switched out to this mohair paler color. It's actually Mohair 63, um, which I believe you can no longer purchase just if some stockers still have any left. Um, just gives it a bit of variation. So now I'm going to try and thicken up the Grevillea leaves. So I've gone in hopefully with a different green, although if it's not it doesn't matter, they're so hard to tell. And I'm thinking of just doing the same stitch around what I already have. Just a little lower down. Just right next to the ones I already have, but a little lower. It's all gotten a bit crazy in this section. I think it went here. That's what it does now anyway. Oops. But now. I'm just going to carry on with that. Over most of the pieces on the bottom. I do want a little variation. I'll be back. So I've thickened up the main branches in the sort of centre around his tummy and just let the other ones a bit thinner out to the sides. One last thing to do if it works, I want to give a little highlight to the eye to make it pop more. So I'm just going to do a little curve of white right around the French knot if I can. A bit nervous, I might stuff up his eye. Oh, that's tough. This is just two strands of white cotton. That's better. Good. Just 
feel like that shows the eye a bit better. That looks like a little bit of a highlight to the eye. My cute little visitor that comes every day. Take you back through the scroll. See if we can get it zoom just right. Okay. So, flower pot prompt. Greenhouse. Veggie garden. Garden gate. And where we started. Getting a bit worn now. Wildflowers. Thanks for watching. See you next time.